if you really want to do something, you, that's going to be hard maybe, depending on whatever you want to do. But if you want to do it, you can do it. This is Melissa Mayu, star shortstop for the University of Louisiana of Lafayette. While the French native's college career has been focused on softball, baseball is where Mayu's historical journey all began. I started playing baseball whenever I was three. Um, I was always um, with my brother. I always wanted to do anything that he was doing. So I was going to practice with him and I was um, always wanted to run with him and go around and do like him. Melissa's developed love for the sport is rather simple. It was about just going and playing our fun and I was not thinking about anything else. And at some point it just became normal. It was just, I was going to school, I was going to baseball and I was going home. While Melissa saw herself playing baseball as normal, outside opinions didn't always agree. Whenever I was younger, it never affected me really much because in my head I was, I was always having fun. And whenever I was going to tournament, people were making fun of me because I was a girl. But the next day they were crying because I was pitching. Melissa soon began to realize that what she was doing was a little out of the ordinary. I thought I was part of the boys, so I was just thinking like a boy in my head. But at some point I realized that I'm different and there's some stuff that they're not going to let me do at some point. She was right. Melissa began to experience pushback when a rule in France said that girls couldn't play baseball past a certain age. But this didn't deter Melissa one bit. I knew that we had that rule in France that girls cannot play baseball past 12. And so I went to the president of the federation at the time and I told him that if, he's, <laughs> if he don't let me play baseball anymore, I'm going to make a surgery so I can still play baseball. <laughs> Melissa's bold move would get the age limit extended by three years. But this wouldn't last for long as Melissa continued to shatter barriers. And so he moved the he moved the rule to 15. But at 14, I made the tryout for the academy and they got me in. And so it was kind of forced to move back the rule again because uh, the academy was four years. I think that was an eye opener for him that if I can do it, other girl can do it. In 2015, Melissa would get a call from her mom that would change her life and make history. She just told me, yeah, you got to sit down and you got to listen to me. I said, OK, what happened? <laughs> and she said, I just had a call. I said, and what from who? Like, what, what's wrong? And she said, uh, you're going you're gonna to go for the MLB camp this summer. And I didn't trust her. I didn't believe her. I was like, that's, that, that's impossible. Like, I made the tryout. I just, I was not even thinking about being on that list, but I was just having fun. Melissa broke another barrier as she was the first woman in history to be deemed eligible to be drafted by the MLB. Unfortunately, this didn't stop the outside criticism. Whenever I get to the MLB list, it was, it was hard. Because at 16, I don't think you, you're fully like, developed and you're still like, looking for, like, to understand yourself. And it was hard to control that until I think it's only recently that I don't, I don't really care anymore about the people's opinion. And I just do my thing and if they want to judge, then they judge, but I'm not wasting my time anymore on people that think I can't do something. No. Melissa was suddenly faced with a very tough decision. She could stay close to home and play in smaller French leagues, or she could move to the U.S. in hopes of pursuing the MLB. So it wasn't easy and I wasn't expecting to leave my house to go play softball. <laughs> so at first I was supposed to come in the States to play baseball. Some coach had talked to me, but they couldn't give a scholarship for a woman playing a male sport. And um, I really wanted to grow up like somewhere else and just being in another culture and figure out what's life. Melissa would go on to take a scholarship opportunity at Miami-Dade College where she would play for two years. It wasn't easy to just leave home and I'm, I was always, I'm always close with my brother and my mom. So just not being there as much as before is hard, but I mean, if you want to do the stuff that you want to do, you got to make sacrifice, so. Not only did Melissa have to figure out how to be away from her family, 
She also had to figure out how to make the transition from baseball to softball. Maybe my last two years in France, I've participated in the European Championship and stuff like that. But I was I never practiced softball before. And once I got to Miami Day, that's where I went to practice softball and just throwing and and hitting. I was spending hours with my coach just to hit against a machine that I couldn't touch for hours. It was very frustrating because a lot of people are saying that coming from baseball, softball is super easy. And so I was kind of thinking the same and uh, that's, that's not true. <laughs> After two outstanding seasons at Miami-Dade, Melissa receives a call from University of Louisiana Lafayette's head coach, Jerry Glasgow. At first, I really didn't know where I was going to go. I had different options. Um, I just liked the fact that Jerry called me one day and he, he asked for my name. I was like, yes, that's me. And he said, OK, I got, I got a scholarship for you. And I had no, like, I honestly had no clue what, what was Raging Cajun, what was Louisiana. I had no idea. But just the fact that he called me and said that, just like that, and give me the chance, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm coming. Just let me know when I got to be there. Melissa's transition to a new country and a new sport wouldn't have been possible without the support of her mother. I mean, I don't think without her, I would have been able to do all this stuff. Sometimes I feel bad because I mean, uh, we're human, we have mental breakdowns, <laughs> and some, some are harder than others, and I know that she go through the same breakdown that I get sometimes, and maybe worse because she can't, she can't do anything except um, keep pushing me to whatever I want to do. So I don't think without her I would have been able to do any of the things I've done. Melissa's brother also played a major role in her journey. Every time that he was coming home uh, from the academy, I was always practicing with him and just trying to do the same thing that he was doing. Whenever, if I'm not hitting or if I'm doing something wrong in defense, I just record myself and I can send him video and he's gonna, he's gonna correct me. And I'm, he's sending me video too, so that's, we're helping each other. Still now, in life, like, he's, he's showing me like a lot of life lesson and I learn a lot from him, so, yeah, that, that, that's very important for me. With her college career coming to an end, there's one question that everybody wants to know. What's next for Melissa Mayu? I honestly don't know, because there is a lot of option. Now that I get softball, I can have option in softball and keep going in softball with the pro league. There's baseball. I know that there's some pro league too that I could potentially be a part of. Um, I'm interested in coaching too. At some point, I want to be able to help others and give back to baseball and softball what they give to me. No matter where she goes, Melissa wants future barrier breakers around the world to take something away from her journey. Growing up, I, I never had that female figure that really showed that baseball was an option. I think that now there's a lot more girls that are playing and that's, that's developing um, women baseball. So I, I'll, I'll just tell them to keep working and just grind and do your thing. And at some point, if you make the sacrifice and you really want to do it, you just, they're going to do it.